And we have returned to Smells Like 90s Rock. And on tonight's show, we're talking about stuff from the 90s. And tonight's topic is the very funny kids show that was on Nickelodeon from 93 to 97 called Wienerville. And we were just in the middle of discussing uh, some of the crazy puppet characters that was on the show. And uh, we'll get right back into it uh, right now. Uh, this was a crazy character, Eric Von First and Second. Uh, he was Commander Ozone's enemy. His goal was to take over Wienerville and marry Dottie. So pretty plain and simple there. Uh, Cocktail Frank, a character that was only uh, only ever seen, like I said, on those televisions because it was all pre-recorded. Uh, the band, he was the band leaner of the Wienerville band, which of course was called Cocktail Frank and his weenies. They were really obsessed with the penis on this show. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, again, subliminal messaging for this show. Cocktail Frank and his weenies. Give it up. Come on. That's just that's kind of crazy. But anyway, Frank is the lead singer and also the guitarist of the group, and he was another one of those Mark Wiener would put his giant, his head onto the puppet body. And I always liked that character because he had multicolored, it was a multicolored wig he'd put on. He was supposed to look like the quote-unquote rock star of the group. So, you know, it, it looked pretty good. But he, they, he was the band leader of the house band of the show. Joey Deluxe, the big shot manager and TV show agent, another puppet where Mark Wiener put his head on the puppet body. Uh, this guy always made me laugh, Professor phosphate. He, he was put together sort of like a Muppet. Now, he this is like, he was a normal puppet, and he, he, he had those, like, straight, you know, he had kind of like the Fozzie Bear hands, where it was like, it was almost as if he was human, you know, because his hands would just move so, you know, normally. He had green hair and only could be seen from the waist up. Again, it was a real puppet. He's the owner of the Wienerville Labs and often causes explosions. That's how he would you would see him, as though there would be a giant explosion and his window would open and there was Professor Phosphate. Prob- other than Dottie, probably the only other extremely popular and well-known uh, uh, puppet from this show was a dinosaur skeleton who was always very grouchy all the time. It's a guy named Boney. And Boney came from the idea of Barney. You know, Barney is the big purple happy go lucky dinosaur that the kids loved. Boney was supposed to be like another dinosaur. He's a dead dinosaur that the kids loved, but he doesn't like to be bothered by him. He hates children. He hates everybody. And and his his personal theme song is I'm Boney, I'm Boney, leave me alone. Now get out of here. And then he would just disappear. But he was a very very popular character on the show. And, and the last puppet that was very popular on the show was a, was a character named Sako. Now what was interesting about this character was that uh, Sako was clearly a puppet that Mark Wiener was playing. It wasn't like he put his head on the puppet body. No, Sokka was a puppet that was operated from the head down. It wasn't a puppet that you came under and then, you, you know, you... you you would only see him from the waist up. No, Mark Wiener would clearly have his hand in the head of Sako, and he would turn his head whenever he would do his voice, and and then they would just have a conversation. Clearly, he was a puppet, but everybody bought it. You know, it was just, it was just that good of a show. But uh, his claim to fame was that he would always get pissed off at Mark and and kick him in the side. Now, the show was a sketch comedy show that featured puppets, and that was what it was. They sort of like the Muppet Show, just different things would go on with these different puppets, and they'd have different elements, like the you know Commander Ozone sketch where they're in space or or it's uh, Mark having a conversation with Dottie, or so on and so forth. That's how it was. And then he'd have the throw-ins like Boney and then Sako and all of that. And it was a lot of fun. But then at the, at the very end of the show, two lucky audience members were selected to get what was called Wienerized, so that they could go and play a game in Playland in Wienerville. Now the, now, the idea of getting Wienerized is that they would be put into this machine that would shrink. And then they go to a commercial or cartoon, and when they would come back, they'd be Wienerized. And what that means is, is they do the puppet thing that Mark Wiener does, where they have a puppet body built into a set, and they have their heads behind, you know, laying on top of the puppet body behind curtains to make them look like the citizens of Wienerville, and that's what it's called being Wienerized. It was extremely clever. It really was. And what they would do is they would compete in and, you know, various little games. It'd be silly games, like who can throw the most pies at each other and hit the face, you know. And whoever would win would get the golden hot dog, and whoever came in second would get the silver hot dog, and whoever won the golden hot dog would get the, quote, special topping. And, of course, Nickelodeon in the 90s, the special topping was slime, green slime. So it was a very, very funny show, very well put together, and it was just very, really entertaining if you're as you're a kid. But if you go back and watch it now, you think, why the hell was I into this show? The show is so freaking stupid, but damn it if it wasn't fantastic when it was on. It really was. It, it was. You know, there was a lot to it, 
And as a kid, I mean, you know, you, you're in love with it. It's a crazy, mixed-up show, and, and you really can't turn away from it. It was just a really a lot of fun. Like I said, it was on from 93 to 97, and uh, if you go to YouTube or anywhere, you can catch some clips from it. Go check it out. You might like it yourself. If you know what I'm talking about, well, then you know what I'm talking about. It was just that good. We'll wrap this up by giving you some random facts about the show. One of the characters I didn't talk about was a character named Captain Bob that... Uh, that Mark Wiener would play. He's a sea captain. He wears yellow rain gear all the time, and he constantly is cracking stupid nautical puns. And the running gag is he would always yell, tidal wave, and a bucket of water would be thrown you know, by somebody off stage, and he'd get soaking wet. Fun fact, the character Captain Bob was a character that first appeared when Mark Wiener was a writer for Saturday Night Live in 1981. I've been trying like hell to find this episode just so I can see that segment, but I, I can't seem to find it anywhere. But if you find it, let me know so I can look at it, because it, it sounds pretty awesome to just see that. I, I didn't really even realize that he was a writer for SNL until a few weeks ago. Tracked that down, and he was on during really one of the worst periods of, of the show's history, but he was on there nonetheless, and that's pretty cool. Uh, there was a running gag on the show where everything was $13.50. For example, they had a talent show. There was a talent show episode, and, and the winners would win uh, 1,350 points. There was another episode where Dottie owns a TV station, and, the, and it's on channel 1350. Don't ask me why. That was, just a, that was just a running joke on the show. And then there was another game. Another game show sketch that they did on there every once in a while called That's Not Fair, where a kid and an adult would play for points, answering stupid questions, and, and usually the kids would win. And according to an interview with Mark Wiener, That's Not Fair was a pilot he actually wrote for Comedy Central in 1991. And after it was tested, the network said, you know what, this is great for kids. So Nickelodeon got a hold of it, and thus it became Wienerville. But they still played this game, That's Not Fair, on there uh, every once in a while. So there you go. All right, so that's the history of the Nickelodeon show Wienerville. I hope I've entertained you and informed you thusly. If not, we'll enjoy some more music right here on Smells Like 90s Rock.